Hi, welcome back. So this is video 10. It's really interesting when you're filming and then you're projecting it out. And uh, so I, I thank you for joining me again. Last video we talked about emotional states to, to get into and I was mentioning that things are speeding up. So the other place people tend to feel very stuck is in thought. So what do you do with, I call them looping thoughts. or negative thoughts that you're struggling with. There's a couple pieces I wanna give you here. We do have a physical body also, and all our different bodies work together. Uh, Dr. Daniel Amen, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life, has a lot of great information about how nutritionally you can support the body because there can be nutritional deficiencies that make it very hard to control the mind. So that may be something that you wanna check out. That's Dr. Daniel Amen, A-M-E-N, Change your brain, change your life. He also comes on PBS a lot. I like to watch his shows. I've seen him live too. Fascinating work. Uh, but and it's a great book. You can just get it on Amazon. Really good book. And uh, so thoughts. Like emotions, if you're having some crazy random thoughts just grabbing you all the time, limiting your ability to enjoy your experience in your life, it's a matter of retraining the mind that you can be the one that's the boss of it. So you want to learn how to focus. How do you do that? Well, if you have looping thoughts, just like inappropriate or overwhelming emotion, it's really a communication, a message to you. It's not there to, to mess your life up. It's not to punish you. It's not to torture you. Although it actually feels that way a lot of times. <laughs> it's actually a message that you have a conflicting belief system going on somewhere in your framework. And this is gonna start happening to all of us because as the energies on Earth are speeding up, as the Earth itself is changing, our consciousness is expanding, just the way our technology is so rapidly evolving, we as humans are too. And there's a lot of different spiritual energy available to us. We're gonna be able to consciously manifest more easily than ever before. And yet, in that, you're gonna know when things are off kilter. So you're first bringing in new ideas, new concepts, and you might find that you have a conflicting belief with what it is you want to um, experience or create. And so how do you access that message and change it? You've got to create time to do this. You've got to find some time. The biggest important thing to do is get out of the judgment out of the criticism, out of the resistance, out of feeling like it's a bad thing. It's not, it's a message. You're, all your bodies wanna support you in a good experience. There's just a lot of conflict in the way, a lot of things that affect us. And you know, personally, my opinion is, well, if it wasn't this much of a journey, how would the whole earth thing work? So if you could embrace it as a journey, instead of looking for an end game, or that it should be logical, or it should be easier, or it should look a certain way, let that go. Be fully present. Start with embracing all of you, even the unruly, the looping, the negative thoughts, and see what the message is. You're simply gonna be with it. And just let your mind, is there a memory that I would have this thought going? You can even play with it a bit. If you've got looping thoughts, ask, what belief would I have to hold somewhere within me that would allow that particular thought pattern to enter my consciousness? Where am I not aligning all my beliefs, my words, and my actions? Sometimes we have to come at it from a different way. Sometimes we have to fake it till we make it. That means that, say you have a new job, when you show up on your first day of work, it's overwhelming. All new energies around you, new personalities, a lot to learn, you're totally out of your comfort zone, but you don't go in and act all wigged out. You go in intending to look intelligent, to look like you belong there, to look like you are happy to be there, when really that's not how you feel yet. And so sometimes right action can help you bring your thought body and your emotional body in alignment too. So if you're having looping thoughts, it's telling you that somewhere 
you're kind of dropping the ball on the action that would actually align with your dominant belief of what you want. So again, how do you find those conflicting beliefs? Through your thoughts, through your emotions, and through your actions. Let me give you one that probably everybody can relate to. So say you got a couple pounds to go to lose, and yet you're going to eat that second piece of big cheesy pizza. And somewhere in your mind you're saying, hmm, do I really need these extra calories when my desire is to be slimmer, but I want the pizza. So that's an action that's creating a big conflict. And so you might want to look, well, what is it I'm believing that makes me reach for the second piece that I'm not really hungry for? What is the real hunger there? What have I been taught? I need to eat it or there's not going to be enough? Is there a scarcity belief system going on? What are the thoughts that are leading to the, the action that's not congruent? What's the emotion leading to the action that's not congruent? You gotta ask questions. If you aren't asking questions, your mind's just running on old stuff. Or it's tapping into mass consciousness and running on that. And the matrix that we are dissolving now is one of fear and scarcity. Survival is about fear and scarcity. Thriving is about a sense of safe, feeling safe within your own skin. Thriving is being able to access more than just what you can see and feel around you, more inspiration, creativity. Thrive means about not just success in a moment, but the kind of success that evolves forward and outward to have positive effect on other people. And, and that space has nothing to do with fear and scarcity. It has to do with feeling safe, with a sense of love at a much higher level than the way we use the word. So how do you, how do you align with that? We're all evolving. We all want that experience, but we don't really have the framework for it yet. So one way to get there is by looking at what are the conflicting beliefs. And that means you got to question your actions, your emotions, and your thoughts when they're happening. Question them from a place of being a good boss of you. Not interrogating them, being angry with them, uh, being resentful of them, making them feel wrong. Actually ask, what's the gift? How can you use the information you're going to get to support you in moving forward, to expand your vision of what's possible for you? Totally different um, frequency to be in when dealing with looping or unruly or negative thoughts that pop out of nowhere. They're always tied to some belief system. And sometimes you just want to be clear. Is it actually your beliefs? Or is it your parents? Or is it your cultures? Or is it something you heard or uh, perceived from a movie or just from mass consciousness, but you just haven't questioned it yet? The mind is a very busy thing. Those aren't all our thoughts. Here's something I really enjoy that I had learned. <clears throat> if you really had control of your mind, if it was all us thinking rather than all these other influences, who would actually know what we're going to think next? But it doesn't work like that. And you know how when you see there are movies, you'll see there's um, you know, the tornado movie, there'll be more than one. Or there'll be a great book that comes out, but there'll be other stories that are kind of similar. That's because we can tap into a, a stream of consciousness that everybody could access at some level. So you really want to start asking questions. If you aren't asking good questions, you're not the one running the mind and thinking the thoughts that you would like to think. So I hope that gives you a better perspective on how to deal with your thoughts. Most important part, be a good boss of you, whether it's your thoughts, your emotions, or even your actions. Don't be the angry, uh, overpowering, forceful boss. Be the boss who's coming from the perspective of, wow, this is going on. How do we utilize it? How do we manage it and fit it in in a way that adds to overall success. That's where we want to go in every aspect of our being with all the many different complicated parts of us. The old subconscious beliefs, the emotions we haven't processed as a child, or even on this journey of growth, it can be as soon as just last month because you're going to keep expanding your consciousness, the truth of you. And so the things that we haven't worked through are actually lifted them into the higher frequency that we're in right now 
we want to we want to invite them lovingly and compassionately to come along with us. And thinking about thoughts, there's something I like to lead people into because again, it gives you a really strong foundation to move forward quickly into a better experience. You might want to question, what's your default mode? So what does that mean? Your default mode of thinking or, and feeling follows thought. So your default mode of thinking is where you go when you're tired, when you're stressed out, or when something unexpected happens. So I challenge you for this next week or longer, see where your thoughts, your feeling place actually goes when you're any of those things. So you want to, you want to become aware of it first, and then you want to decide to change it. So we're talking about our default mode. Now you might have different areas where this could change a little bit. So if that's true for you, you, you want to look at that. Okay, so I know that my dominant default mode today is gratitude. Now do I get there always immediately? No, sometimes it takes me a little while, but I'm pretty quick at it now. I tend to see things as happening for me, not to me. I believe that there's a gift in anything, but now I'm creating at a level where if it's in my reality, it's here to serve me or I wouldn't have created it or allowed it in. I wouldn't resonate with that. So I, I can pretty much get to a gratitude default level pretty quick, but that has not always been true. My most dominant default mode, whether I expressed it or not, used to be anger. And any of your, your negative emotions, you can always wiggle back to fear. But anger, you know, think of it. If I was tired, I would be grumpy. And if I was really tired, watch out probably didn't want to be around me. So it's been a journey for me shifting, but it's, you, you can't really make that shift if you don't get conscious with it first. So really look, next time you're tired, next time you're overworked or you're shifting gears from highly productive into relaxing, see where your thoughts go. If somebody startles you, surprises you, uh, some circumstance gets challenging, where are your thoughts going? Do you feel enraged? Do you feel victimized? Do you feel like you want to shut down, withdraw? Do you go silent? What is your default mode when you're under stress, when you're tired, or when something unexpected happens? And then you want to see, is that what I would choose? You can create any default mode you want. And a way that I'm going to I'll make it available for you is having a mission statement. So I'm going to send you a link, or not send you, I'm going to provide a link in the blog for you so that you can write a personal mission statement. And this can really help you because a default mode happens. You know, it takes time to grow into a different consciousness around uh, those arenas when you're tired, when you're stressed, when something unexpected happens. But it's a lot faster and life is a lot more fun if you have clarity and direction. Way back in one of the earlier videos, you know, I said if you, uh, if you don't have a final destination, any road will do. It's actually Lewis Carroll who said that. Although I did notice in quotes, uh, uh, a musician was also, uh, his name was put with that. So I'm not sure how that worked. Great quote though. So if you don't know where you're going, any road will do. A mission statement can help you really quickly go from whatever default mode showed up that doesn't feel comfortable to whoa. What is it I would like to think and align with that matches the mission statement for my life? Now you might have different mission statements in different areas of your life. Uh, as a parent, as, a, as an employee, as a spouse, as a teacher, as a student, it, it depends. But overall you might even have one big one for your life. So I'm going to make that information available to you to support you on your journey into growing into not only being the boss of you, but being outrageously successful in your life. Thanks for joining me, and please leave any questions. I can answer them for you in an, at another video. Thanks so much.